aside from Madame de Pompadour, Madame du Barry and the Nesle sisters, Louis XV had many mistresses who were unofficially titled Les Petites Maîtresses and who have been largely forgotten by history. Today we'll take a brief look at these forgotten women who, for a short period during the reign of Louis XV, played a major part in the life of the Playboy King. Françoise de Chalus Françoise de Chalus was born on July 21, 1734, in Louveciennes. Due to her noble blood, Françoise came to court to serve as lady-in-waiting to Madame Adélaïde de France, who was a legitimate daughter of Louis XV. The first reports of Françoise being a mistress of Louis XV date from 1749, when she was only 15 years old. She was married to Jean-François de narbonne la on July 10, 1749, with whom she officially had two children, Philippe Louis Innocent Christophe de narbonne la and Louise Marie de narbonne la However, contemporary documents show that her husband was unable to procreate, as he had part of his reproductive organ blown off by a pistol shot during battle. Therefore, the children are unlikely to be these of the narbonne la Grande. As Françoise is known to have had an affair with Louis XV as early as 1749, several historians consider the children to be the bastard sons of Louis XV and that Françoise got married in order to hide the fact that she was pregnant from the illegitimate child of Louis XV. As a faithful lady-in-waiting to Adélaïde de France, Françoise accompanied Adélaïde and Victoire when they left France in 1791 due to the French Revolution. All of her possessions were confiscated by the revolutionaries in 1793. Françoise remained in exile until the end of the revolution, after which she returned to France. She died in Paris on July 7, 1821, at the age of 87. Marie-Irène Catherine du Boisson de Longpré. Marie-Irène was born in 1720 and is known in memoirs and historiography as Madame Filleuil. Irène originated from an impoverished family of the Norman nobility and in 1747 she married the bourgeois man Charles-François Filleuil who was employed in the royal stables at court. Quickly, she caught the king's eye, and it is suspected Irène became mistress to the king around 1750. However, Irène never received the title of maîtresse en titre, and her relationship with the king remained a clandestine one. It is suspected that the first of Irène's two daughters, Marie-Françoise Julie Constance Filleuil, who was born in 1751, was the daughter of the king. Upon the birth of Julie, Irène's husband was promoted to the position secretary of the king and Irène herself also became lady-in-waiting to Adélaïde of France. Irène died in 1767 at the age of 47. Marie-Louise O'Murphy de Boisfailly Marie-Louise was born in Rouen on October 21, 1737, as the fifth daughter of the son of an Irish soldier who had started a shoemaking business in Rouen, France. After his death, her mother brought the family to Paris. In 1752, when Marie-Louise was 14 years old, she posed nude for a memorable and provocative portrait by painting François Boucher. Her beauty caught the attention of Louis XV, who arranged for her to come to court, and she soon became one of his mistresses. Marie-Louise gave birth to an illegitimate daughter, Agathe Louise de Saint-Antoine, in 1754. Marie-Louise's career as mistress of the king lasted for only two years. Around 1754, Marie-Louise unsuccessfully tried to sideline Madame de Pompadour and this move quickly resulted in O'Murphy's downfall at court. During the French Revolution, Marie-Louise was imprisoned because of a royal escapade, but she survived and was released. She also survived the terror and the many years of political turmoil. Marie-Louise finally died in Paris on December 11, 1814, at the age of 77. Marie-Anne de Mailly ruban -Pré. Marie-Anne was born on September 17, 1732, and married the Marquis Charles-Georges-René du Cambou de Coislin on October 8, 1750. 
She was introduced to Louis XV in 1755 through the Prince of Conti. Conti hoped that Marie-Anne would take the Marquise de Pompadour's place as the king's political advisor, but Marie-Anne proved to lack political interest and talent. The attempt was widely publicized and at one point she challenged Pompadour to a card game, pointing out that she only had kings in her hand, which was seen as ambiguous. Pompadour regarded her as a real rival, but when things came to a head, the king preferred to send Marie-Anne away rather than Pompadour. No other woman would subsequently emerge as a serious competitor to Madame de Pompadour before her death in 1764. Marie-Anne left the French court and travelled through Europe, becoming the mistress of King Gustav III of Sweden and of Tsar Peter III of Russia, among others. Ruined by the bankruptcy of the Prince of Gemene, to whom she had entrusted a large sum of money, she returned to Versailles after the death of Louis XV. Marie-Anne remained in France and during the French Revolution she hid in Rouen, then in Brittany and the Vendée. Marie-Anne died on February 13, 1817, in Paris at the age of 84, and she is buried at Père Lachaise Cemetery. Marguerite Catherine Hainaut Marguerite was born in 1736 as the daughter of a tobacco merchant. In 1759, she became petite maîtresse to Louis XV. She is said to have been a good painter and on one occasion painted a picture of the king. Marguerite had two daughters with the king, Agnès Louise de Montreuil, who was officially registered as the daughter of Louis de Montreuil, and Anne Louise de la Réal, who was registered as the daughter of the officer Antoine Louise de la Réal. Her daughters were taken from her and brought up in the Chaillot Convent School and as adults had letters of nobility, dowries and noble marriages arranged for them. Her relationship with the king ended after the birth of her second daughter in 1762 and in 1766 she married Blaise Arrault, Marquis de Montmelat, a nobleman 18 years her junior. The marriage remained childless. The couple left France during the French Revolution, but they returned after the Reign of Terror. Their son-in-law, René Guillaume de Gueselin, was guillotined during the Revolution as a participant in the Vendée Revolt. The couple separated in 1803. Marguerite's husband kept their house in Paris, while Marguerite settled at the Château de mont le where she died in 1823 at the age of 87. Anne Coupier de Romans Anne was born in 1737 as a member of a family belonging to the petite nobility of Grenoble. She was brought to court by her sister, Madame Varnier, again to serve as lady-in-waiting to Adélaïde of France. She was presented to the king in 1759 and became his mistress the following year. As a result of this relationship, Anne gave birth to a son, louis Aimé de Bourbon, in 1672, the only illegitimate son to be recognized by the monarch. Anne lost the king's favor in December 1765, who, tired of Anne's demands to make her his new maîtresse en titre after the death of Madame de Pompadour, ended up sending her to the Ursuline convent in Saint-Denis and separating her from her son. After her release, Anne received an annual pension of 3,000 livres. In 1772, Anne married Gabriel Guillaume de Siran, Marquis de Cavanac, with whom she had two children. Despite her numerous requests, the king never allowed Anne to see her son, and the Marquise had to make due with receiving news from him through intermediaries. In 1774, after the death of Louis XV, Anne was reunited with her son by petitioning King Louis XVI. In the years before the outbreak of the French Revolution, Anne became one of the best-known women in the Paris salons. She managed to stay safe during the Revolution and died in 1808 at the age of 71. Lucie Madeleine d'Estaing Lucie was born in 1743 as the illegitimate daughter of Charles-François d'Estaing, Vicomte de Ravel. She was the half-sister of Charles Henri d'Estaing. In 1760, she became mistress to Louis XV and had two daughters with the king, Agnès Lucie Auguste, who was born in 1761, and Aphrodite Lucie Auguste, who was born in 1763. Although the children were never legalized, they were well taken care of by the king. 
Lucy's relationship with Louis XV ended after the birth of her second daughter. Her half-brother legitimized her in 1768. The now legalized Lucy married Count François de Boiseuil in 1768, with whom she had four children. She died in 1826 at the age of 83. Louise Jeanne Thiercelin de la Colletterie Louise Jeanne was born in Mortagne on December 26, 1746. It is said that, from the age of 11, she was prepared to become the mistress of Louis XV. In 1762, Louise Jeanne was brought to court and quickly became the mistress of Louis XV. She was then about 16 years old. Louise Jeanne's youthful character and fits of anger amused the king. In love with her childish demeanor, the king indulged her every whim. Louise Jeanne soon became pregnant and on February 7, 1764, she gave birth to a son who was named Benoit Louis le Duc. With age, Louis Anne became more ambitious and she was sent away from court shortly after the birth of her son for scheming in order to have her son legitimized. Upon her departure from court, the king provided her with furniture, jewelry and a pension of 12,000 livres, but Anne decided this income was too modest and she constantly harassed the king with requests for more money. Louise Anne liked to spend money and soon she was in debt. The king, who took pity on her, always ended up paying the debts of Louise Anne, who spent nearly 100,000 livres a year. Louise never married and led a lifestyle that often drew attention to herself. Eventually, worn out by her turbulent lifestyle, Louise Anne's health deteriorated. She died of a heart attack on July 5, 1779, at Saint-Germain-en-Laye. When she died, she owed 300,000 livres and the king ordered that her last debts be paid by the royal treasury. Catherine Eleonore Bernard Catherine was born in Versailles on February 3, 1740 and also served as lady-in-waiting to Adelaide. Catherine married Joseph Starot de Saint-Germain, Baron de Montmeyran, on March 11, 1768 and died in Versailles less than a year later on February 23, 1769, after giving birth to a daughter. After the birth of her child, rumors erupted that the king would have been the father of the girl, but historically, this has not been proven. Catherine's husband ended up a victim of the French Revolution and was guillotined in 1794. Marie-Thérèse Françoise Boisselet Marie-Thérèse was born in 1731 as the daughter of a kitchen employee at Versailles. Because she was very beautiful, she quickly caught the eye of the king and became one of his petite maîtresse. The relationship between the king and Marie-Thérèse led to the birth of a baby boy named Charles Louis. In 1771, Marie-Thérèse married Louis-Claude Cadet de Gassicourt, who quickly got promoted by the king because the Gassicourt adopted the king's illegitimate son. Marie-Thérèse survived the French Revolution and died in 1800. Are you going to watch the movie Jean du Barry with Johnny Depp as Louis XV? Please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.